When smartphones were first being developed, people complained about them that they were getting too big. Eventually, this became the standard. And then about a year ago, 5-inch screen devices started to come out and plenty of people complained that they were getting too big. And now, they've pretty much become the standard. Well, it looks like smartphones are getting bigger and bigger and Sony has come out with what is arguably the biggest one. Is this going to be the standard? Hey, it's Joshua Vergara from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is the Sony Xperia Z Ultra. Sony has seemed to find its groove for its Xperia phones as the general design elements remain pretty similar. Putting the size aside for now, we see shades of the Xperia Z in the rigid corners. The entire front is made of the screen and the back simply has the Xperia name with the 8 megapixel camera in the top corner. The button layout is classic Xperia, with the big silver power button atop the volume rockers that are all positioned right where your right thumb would land. And of course, because of the IP certification we've come to expect from Sony phones, most every port is covered in a piece of rubberized plastic. I did see a problem with the SIM and micro SD slot cover, because no matter how much I tried to get it to feel secure, it just didn't until I tried much harder. For the most part, you just have to make sure it's completely flat. And then you take a step back and realize this is one of the most attractive phones ever. The black slate design is in full force here even with this white edition. At 6.5mm thick and 212 grams light, the Ultra is like a featherweight of a phone that feels simplistic, despite not quite being so in smartphone standards. Sony has always had a knack for making sleek and somewhat futuristic looking devices and this is a great example. Remember what the house of the future was supposed to have? A big remote that controls everything. This basically looks like that, kind of like a proof of concept, but instead of controlling your blinds, it's a phone. In the hand, it's a tablet. There's really no other way around it. This is simultaneously the biggest phone and the smallest tablet. As such, working with one hand is pretty much never ideal, though you could certainly try. Turning the phone on its side and working in landscape mode gives you a much more natural feeling since the bezels at the top and bottom are large enough for thumbs. Ease of use in landscape mode makes the Xperia Z Ultra feel good and make it quite like a personal assistant in that regard. As a phone, this is far from an easy thing to bring around. While thin enough to fit in most pockets, it is so tall that it will stick right out. Then there's the fear that any awkward tilts or bends will snap it in two. It's not that fragile by any means but you can't help but feel that way with such a tall and thin device. Attractive, huge, practical one day, fun another, and then just plain odd to handle yet another day, there is really only one way to describe this monster. It's altogether the toy we dreamed of as kids, but then think of as overkill when we're adults. At 6.4 inches, this is certainly one of the largest phone displays you're currently going to see. Though we might be seeing displays that surpass that 1080p resolution, the Xperia Z Ultra stuck to the tried and true. Capable of 1080p resolution and 344 ppi, this display is also backed by the Triluminous feature and the X-Reality engine. Thankfully, Sony has been improving on their displays since the Xperia Z and the Ultra is an example of this nice evolution. Viewing angles are not only now existent, but are actually decent. Well, somewhat. The enhancements bring a good level of contrast among the colors. Watching videos makes you feel like you're holding a small Sony Bravia TV. In broad daylight, however, the brightness does leave some to be desired. Ultimately, it's a screen made for mostly indoor usage, partially for its lack of true brightness, but also because of its sheer size. When it is done right, however, this is a really fun screen to use. The other enhancement on this screen is its ability to register touches from a myriad of metal surfaces. This is most practical with, say, the back of a pen, perhaps the tip of a pencil. Here's a key, here's a headphone plug, here's a quarter, here's the corner of my sunglasses. Now here's where Sony didn't want to be left behind. With the Snapdragon 600 kind of slipping past the S4 Pro found in the original Xperia Z, they were sure to put in the current king, the Snapdragon 800, in the Ultra. Clocked in at a whopping 2.2GHz, this package is rounded out by the Adreno 330 and 2GB of RAM. Scores are incredibly high in Antutu benchmark, and Epic Citadel float about as beautifully as I have ever seen it. If this is the future of smartphones, then we're in for a good ride. 
Performance in practice is as good as it's ever been, with all elements flying by and multitasking with the small apps remaining a breeze. In hardware, we already know that the Z Ultra has the certifications for water and dust resistance. 16 gigabytes of onboard memory is available even though there is a micro SD card slot available for expandability. As far as sensors go, the Ultra has actually fallen behind a bit because it lacks an IR blaster. So much for controlling things with your Black Slate device in your home. Various versions of the Xperia Z Ultra are available for various networks and LTE connectivity, so be sure of what you're getting for your respective network. A 3050 milliamp hour battery of incredibly thin proportions powers the Xperia Z Ultra. It's supposed to make an insanely large phone like this work through an entire day's work and play and it seems to do so. In my battery test I watched a couple episodes of Top Gear, that's two hours of some really high quality programming, and after those two hours I got the battery down to about 70%. That would put the battery in straight media consumption, crack up to about maybe seven hours. In a full day's work, the good standby time and the power saving features all help the phone get through that full day you might need. If you use it like a tablet with all that continuous usage, then you're probably going to get tablet-like longevity. But if you use it less intensively and more like a phone, then that standby time and these power saving features will help you get a lot more out of it. Much like pretty much every tablet we've seen, the Xperia Z Ultra's camera does not include a flash diode and that's usually a hint to its quality. In the app, things remain largely the same as in previous Xperia phones. You get the superior auto that harkens back to Cybershot days and does a good job of getting the right settings for your shot. Included are a number of scenes for pinpointing those best shot settings, sweeping panorama, and some picture effects. Other than that, it's more of what we've come to expect from a smartphone camera. Picture quality then is good enough for a device you might not be taking many pictures with. Without a flash unit, you won't be taking many low light shots, but luckily good lighting helps make for pretty nice pictures out of the Z Ultra. While this phone manages to be just small enough to not look as weird as a tablet when taking pictures, it certainly does toe the line. And its quality makes it a camera backup rather than more of a replacement shooter. Sony's Xperia UI hasn't changed a whole lot since the Xperia Z, but that isn't much of a surprise, because the Z came out not too long ago. Sony keeps things pretty simplistic with a UI that looks a little bit like Ice Cream Sandwich while being fully Jelly Bean 4.2.2. One notable addition I found here is a built-in way of connecting your PS3 controller to the phone, so that's really nice. Otherwise, you get pretty typical elements in the much darker and less colorful tones. You get the different Sony apps for media consumption like the Gallery and the Walkman. And finally, the small apps. Small overlays that give you quick access to little apps for multitasking. This is all on top of the Google editions like Google Now. Overall, the Sony Xperia UI is simplistically elegant without really trying too hard, but that also might make it too simplistic for some, and for others, maybe it's just the right fit. A price for the stateside version of the Xperia Z Ultra hasn't really been put out yet, but currently it does sell on Amazon UK for a whopping 800 quid. In reality though, the American price should actually be around 800 US. The general release info is still rather vague, however. Obviously for us tech people out there, the Sony Xperia Z Ultra is pretty much just the next step. It's not necessarily surprising given what we know about the smartphone market. So with that in mind, it occurred to me to check with my friends to see what their reactions would be. So here are a couple of my friends' reactions. Am I, am I allowed to look? Yeah. Holy <laughs> 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 Hey, don't really want to see. Oh my this is God. way <laughs> too <laughs> huge. <laughs> <laughs> Mother! Wait, wait, this is not a phone. That is a I phone. Don't <laughs> oh, wow! Oh, something magical just happened. If I have to get a tablet, then I would get this, but not as a phone. So, this is first and foremost a phone, it's not a tablet. Yes, it's a phone. I can't put this in my purse. <laughs> to be fair, I would probably be less likely to lose this. I mean, it's hard to misplace something this big. But it, I like how thin it is. That's good. Yeah, design-wise, what do you think? Um, it's very heavy. It looks. I like the rims. Maybe I'd read more books and newspapers on here. I tried reading a book on my iPhone the other day, and that was kind of terrible. <laughs> The design of it is nice. If it was smaller, then I would get it. If it was smaller. I like the design. It's very sleek. Got the dog. Dog. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Shiny. 
shiny. Shiny. And so, there you have it. If you've noticed me going back and forth in this review, that's really just the nature of this device. At one point, it's brilliantly fun, and the size is great for putting the world at your fingertips. In other instances, it's just not a very practical device, unless it's used primarily in your office or home. As you saw with my friends, this is certainly a surprising phone to behold. All at once, this is a phone that appeals to the toy-driven kid in all of us, the spec-hungry, and the part of us that is, for all intents and purposes, just curious. And when you finally get your hands on the device, you will either find quite a bit to love about it, you'll probably hate the size, or perhaps you'll ponder that one day, this might become the standard. But at least for now, it's not going to be mine. For all of the best coverage and reviews, make sure you stay tuned to the Android Authority channel. Don't forget to drop us a like down below, check out all of our other content on the Android Authority channel, and then subscribe. And when you're done with all of that, head over to our website, androidauthority.com, because we're your source for all things Android. Looks a little bit like an Apple computer. Really? <laughs>